This is GMATS 41. You are welcome to a class on vectors. In our previous class, I introduced you to the algebra of vectors and I taught you how you can add and or subtract two or more vectors. In this class, I'll be teaching you another form of algebra of vectors, which is multiplication of vectors. When vectors are given to you to multiply, how do you go about it? We shall learn the two methods of multiplying vectors. One, we have the scalar product, also known as the dot product of vectors. And then another method or way in which we can multiply vectors is by the cross or the vector product of vectors. So we have the scalar product, also known as the dot product. And then we have the vector product, also known as the cross product of vectors. For the scalar product of vectors, we simply use a dot, all right, to show that. And then the cross product of vectors, we use cross as a symbol for that. So if you have scalar product of A and B, it is simply A dot B. If you have cross product of A and B, it is simply A then cross, all right, like multiplication symbol, then B. We are going to take these methods of multiplying vectors one at a time. First, we shall start with the scalar method, the scalar product, the dot product of vectors. To do this, I want you to consider this diagram here, please. You have these two vectors which move from this origin, O, vector A and B. And then, of course, the angle between the vectors, we've used theta to represent it. Now, if you look at the way I drew this, okay, I had to put arrowhead on top and then arrowhead below, something like this, okay? Now, I'll tell you the implication of that, simply to tell us that the order of scalar multiplication does not matter. In fact, as a property of scalar multiplication, it is commutative, is that okay? If you do A dot B, it's still the same as B dot A. Okay, so I want to define the scalar product or the dot product of vectors. It is defined as the product of the magnitude of these two vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. So if you are given, say, vector A and B to obtain their dot product, it is simply magnitude of A times magnitude of B multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. And of course, that is what is defined by equation 1, as you can see on the board. I would like us to talk a little about this scalar product formula here. Is that okay? Especially considering this cos theta, because it's a very important part of this formula. It helps us to get to know certain properties of dot product. Is that okay? For example, when the angle between the vectors is equal to 0, what do we expect to be the dot product of the vectors? When the angle between them is 90 degrees, what do we expect to be the value of the dot product? And of course, even when we have the angle between them to be 180, that is in the case of the vectors being antiparallel. But I'd like to limit my explanation to when the angle is zero and when the angle is 90 degrees. For two vectors to have angle between them equal to zero, it simply tells us that the vectors are parallel. You can take a look at the screen here. These are two vectors, they are parallel. Are you following right? Because they are parallel, the angle between them is equal to zero. Remember from basic knowledge of geometry, when you have two parallel lines, parallel lines are lines that do not meet. And angles are formed only when lines meet. So given two vectors and we say that the vectors are parallel, the angle between them is equal to zero. What is the implication considering equation one here? Once the angle between two vectors is equal to zero, we're going to have cos zero. And cos zero from trigonometry is equal to one. So that by multiplying this value of cos zero in that case, which is one, by the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B, what we are going to get is simply the product of these magnitudes, A and B. What does that mean? 
For the angle between vectors a and b to be equal to zero, simply a dot b will now be equal to magnitude of a times magnitude of b, as simple as that. That is what we have here. If theta is equal to zero degree, this is what you expect to get. Is that okay? In our past classes, I introduced the concept of specific unit vectors. Okay, we talked about the i, j, k, which tells us direction or gives us direction in x, in y, and in z axis, respectively. We can use the concept of this scalar product to obtain the value of the dot product of any of these two unit vectors. We can use this concept of scalar product to obtain the value of i dot i, j dot j, k dot k, i dot j, i dot k, j dot k. And that is what I try to demonstrate here. Look at this three-dimensional space coordinate here. We have the x, y, z uh, axis. And then, of course, we have our unit vectors i, j, and k. So let us assume that you have two vectors, and the vectors are moving in the same direction. So let us say vector i and vector i. So they are in x axis. Are you following? The fact that they are moving in the same direction simply tells us that they are parallel. And because they are parallel, the angle between them equals what? That is correct, equal to zero. Now, that being the case, look at this. We want to obtain the value of i dot i using the definition of scalar product. i dot i will be equal to magnitude of i times magnitude of i multiplied by cos of the angle between them. Because in this case, the angle is zero because they are what? Parallel. And cos zero is one. Magnitude of a unit vector from our previous classes, we already learned that it's equal to one. So this is going to give us one times one times one. And of course, one times one times one is equal to one. So i dot i, if you are asked to find a value, it's simply equal to what? One. With this explanation given here, we can conclude also for j dot j, k dot k. So in general, i dot i is equal to j dot j, is equal to k dot k, and the value is what? One. Please don't forget that. What if the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees? That is to say that the two vectors are orthogonal. They are orthogonal, it means they are perpendicular. The angle between them is 90. That is what we consider here, that if theta is equal to 90 degrees in this case. Now, how do we get the 90 degrees if we choose to talk about these unit vectors here? These three unit vectors they meet at 90 degrees. That's why we say they are orthogonal. Are you following, right? And for that reason, if I pick i dot k or i dot j or j dot k, I can use the concept of scalar product of vectors to determine the value of that multiplication. Remembering that, picking any two different unit vectors, the angle between them is what? 90. So watch i dot j will now be equal to magnitude of i times magnitude of j, then multiplied by cos 90. And we know from trigonometry that cos 90 is equal to 0. Therefore, this i dot, r, i dot j, which is equal to magnitude of i times magnitude of j times 0, eventually becomes what? 0. So what's the implication and conclusion that we can make from here? When you are dealing with these specific unit vectors, i dot j is equal to zero. Therefore, i dot k is also equal to zero and j dot k is equal to zero. Look at it. i dot j will be equal to i dot k. That will also be equal to j dot k. And we'll get our value to be what? Zero. All right, we are going to look at how we can obtain dot product when we have the components of the vectors. But before we look at that, please, I'd like you to look at this equation one. This fundamental equation of dot product or scalar product can be used to obtain the value of the angle between any two vectors. Is that okay? You know, from here, if we make theta subject to the formula, take a look at the screen now. To so calculate the angle between any two vectors, say maybe vector A and B, it will be theta equal to cos inverse of A dot B divided by magnitude of A times magnitude of B. So you want to remember this, okay? We use this formula to calculate the angle between any two vectors. 
As we move on, we'll still look at some other important concepts of the dot product. For example, if I give you two the same vectors now, they are no longer unit vectors. Let's say I give you vector v, all right? And then I tell you to multiply vector v by itself. The way we are multiplying vector v by itself, it simply goes in line with what I explained as regard i dot i, because the v v will be in the same direction. So the angle between them will be zero, which means that v dot v will be equal to magnitude of v times magnitude of v times cos zero. Cos zero is one. One times anything is that term. So magnitude of v times magnitude of v would give you magnitude of v squared. I hope you're following that, right? Okay. Let's move on. As we go, we'll see how we can apply all these concepts in calculations. We shall be talking about how to obtain the dot product of two vectors this time around using the components of the vectors. Now consider a case that you're given the components of the vectors a and b. Right? You can see them given this way. We have axi plus ayj plus azk. And then similar to B as well too, BXI plus BYJ plus BZK. By now, we know what each of these terms represent, okay? They are components of the vectors. And now, we are required to obtain A dot B. So this is another mathematical approach to determining, to calculate A dot B in a situation where the components of the vectors are given to us. So I'm going to call this... Equation 2 as a formula we can also use to calculate the dot product of two vectors. Remember, when the components of the vectors are given to you and you have no business likely with the angle, are you following right, of the vectors? So we just use this. Alright, um, having known that we could go through the component method to calculate the dot product of vectors, I now want to give a general idea if following right or let's say a general relationship between equation one and two that we've established already i would like to do it here so i can say notes since we know that a dot b all right is equal to magnitude of a times magnitude of b multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them that is as given by equation one and then in equation two we know that a dot b is equal to the multiplication of the same components of the vectors. You could see this, all right? The i i uh, uh, components or coefficients we multiply them, giving us this. J j components or coefficients we multiply them, giving us this. Z z coefficients we multiply them. A z b z, you know, to get this. Then you sum them together. So this is also another equation for a to b. So we can say conclusively that the dot product of two vectors, say a to b is equal to magnitude of A times magnitude of B multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. It is also equal to A sub X times B sub X plus A sub Y times B sub Y plus A sub Z times B sub Z. The sub means subscripts, just like I wrote them down here. Is that okay? So I want to remember this general relationship. Are you following right? And uh, of course, there's nothing there. We're going to solve problems using the formulas we've established so far in order to appreciate this the more. I want to believe that by now, we know how to calculate the magnitude of a vector because we treated that already in our previous class. So we shall pick question and then apply the knowledge of this concept of scalar product. But quickly before I move on into uh, solving question and that, I would also want to mention that we can use the knowledge of scalar product to determine the orthogonal projection of a particular vector in the direction of another vector. Is that okay? We'll treat that um, in form of calculation as we move on.